Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this corduroy pinafore dress. So if you're interested in how I achieved this look, please stay tuned. All right guys, let's get started. I have a yard of corduroy fabric here. I used a little less than the whole yard for this dress. A jean fabric would work for this dress as well. I have these overall buckle sets I ordered off of Amazon. There's four sets total, two silver, two brass. The width of the buckle openings are one and one fourth inches. I'll make sure to put the link for this in the description box below. I also have one of my daughter's t-shirts to trace for the pattern. I take the shirt and fold it in half to the front. Starting from the front neckline, I measure down 4 inches and fold at that point. I measure down 22 inches for the length of the dress. You can make yours longer or shorter depending on your desired length. Back at the top of the dress, I measure 3.5 inches across. Then starting at the top again, I measure down 8 inches. From that point, I measure across 7 inches, which is the measurement of my daughter's waist divided by 4. At the bottom, I measure 8 inches across, which is the measurement around my daughter's hips divided by 4. Then I connect the 7 and 8 inch points on a diagonal line and the 3.5 and, and 7 inch points on a curved line. It's best to do this with the curved ruler, but if you're confident enough to do this freehand, feel free to do so. That's what I did. Here I have the pattern for the front of the dress. Going over the measurements for visual purposes, this is the length at 22 inches. At the top, it's three and a half inches across. Eight inches down from the top, it's seven inches across, and at the bottom, eight inches across. The eight and seven inch points are connected on a diagonal line and the seven and three and a half inch points are connected on a curved line. The back pattern piece is similar as the length, the bottom and the center measurements and tracing are the same. However, the top of the back pattern piece is measured differently. At the top, I measure a straight line across. At one and one fourth inches in, I measure a half inch down. From the top, I measure and trace a 1 and 1 fourth inch diagonal line connecting to the half inch point. The 1 and 1 fourth measurement is indicative of the width of the straps and the opening of the buckles. Then I connect the end of the 1 and 1 fourth inch and 7 inch point with a curved line. I add a half inch seam allowance to both pieces on all sides and cut two separate pieces each onto fabric. For the pocket pattern, I measure down 8 inches, 6 inches across the bottom, 3 inches across the top, 4 inches up from the bottom on the other side, then I connect the end of the 3 and 4 inch points on a diagonal line. I add a half inch seam allowance on all sides and cut two separate pieces onto fabric. To measure the strap pattern, I grab the t-shirt still folded 4 inches below the front neckline. I measure from the fold to the top of the shoulder seam and add five more inches to that measurement. Altogether, that made 11 and a half inches for the length. For the width, I multiply one and one fourth inches by two since this will be folded in half lengthwise. I add one inch for the seam allowance, which makes three and a half inches total for the width. I add a half inch seam allowance on one end as this will be cut on the fold on the other end. Just to give an idea, this will be folded in half lengthwise like this when sewed together. Here I have the front and back pattern pieces, the pocket pieces, and the strap pieces. To start, I take the front and back pattern pieces and line them together, right sides facing in, and sew down the straight edge with a straight stitch. I also sew an overlock stitch along the raw ends of the edge as well. After sewing those two together and adding the overlock stitch, I lay the seam allowance to one side and top stitch along the edge with a straight stitch. 
I also overlock stitch along the curve of the armholes and along the bottom for both pieces. I set those to the side and grab the pocket pieces. As you can see, I've added an overlock stitch on all five sides. Next, I fold in a half inch on all sides and sew down with the straight stitch. Here's what the pockets look like after that's done. I grab the front piece of the dress and lay it down right side facing up. Towards the bottom, I place both pocket pieces on each side by eyeballing the placement to my liking. I also measure around the pockets to make sure they're as evenly placed as possible and pin them in place. Starting from the top, I sew along the edges of the pockets with a straight stitch leaving the diagonal edge open. After sewing the pockets, I remove the pins. Before moving on, I cut a few pieces of fabric for the top front and top back hem and finishing. For the top front, I make sure the length overlaps on both ends at 3 inches wide. On one side lengthwise, I overlock stitch the ends and hem with a straight stitch. For the top back, I do the same and overlap on both ends for the length at 3 inches wide. Again, I overlock stitch on one side lengthwise and hem with a straight stitch for both pieces. Here's a look at those finishing pieces once they're done. Starting with the front piece, I line the raw ends at the top, making sure both ends are overlapped evenly, right sides facing in, and pin in place. Then I remove the excess fabric cutting along the curve on both sides and sew along the sides with a straight stitch. After the pieces sew on, I cut the corners and the excess seam allowance across the top right above the seam. Then I turn it right side out and make sure to push the corners out on both sides. I top stitch along the top edge, then flip over and top stitch along the bottom edge. Here's what it looks like after complete, and I set that to the side for now. I grab both strap pieces and open them up, then fold them in half lengthwise, right sides facing in, and sew along the raw edge with a straight stitch. When that's done, I cut off the excess seam allowance. Now I'm going to turn them right side out. Since I misplaced my loop turner, I'll be using my fingers and this crochet hook as the tools to help me turn them inside out. At one end of the strap, I begin to fold the end into itself. I use my fingers to continue pushing inward. Once I get a good amount in, I position my finger inside and push and pull the end of the strap toward the other opening. When it gets too bunched up, I just remove my finger and straighten out the fabric. Then I continue to push and pull through. When I get to a close enough distance to the other side, I grab my crochet hook, insert it at the opening, hook it onto the other end of the fabric inside, and pull it through to the opening. Once there, I'm able to completely pull the strap right side out. I pull along the seam to straighten out the strap. Then I top stitch along the edge of the seam and along the edge on the other side. After top stitching, you can see the strap has flattened out. At this point, I grab a set of buckles, which includes a hook, a strap adjuster, 
and the button that the hook snaps onto. Starting with the strap adjuster, I pull one end of the strap up through the right side of the bar. Then I loop it over the bar down through the other side and push the adjuster further up onto the strap. Next I grab the buckle hook and pull the same end of the strap up through the right opening. Then I loop it over the center bar and pull it down through the opening on the other side. I push both the adjuster and buckle hook further up onto the strap and flip it over to the other side. Still working with the same end of the strap, I pull down on the strap where the adjuster is to make room to loop the end of the strap through. When there's room, I pull the bar back to one side to make an opening. I push the end of the strap down through that opening and pull through. Then I loop the end of the strap up through the other side of the bar and pull through. I pull the strap up on the other side of the adjuster to close the loop. Then I take the end of the strap towards the back and fold inward 1 4 inch twice and sew along the bottom edge with a straight stitch. Here's a close look of that when it's done. I went ahead and attached the buckle hook and adjuster to the other strap. Now I grab the back of the dress and lay it right side facing up. I take one strap with the top facing down. Then I line the end of the strap starting at the center point at the top. I take the other strap and do the same on the other side and pin both straps in place. Then I take the piece of the fabric that I prepared earlier and lay it right side facing up. I take the dress and flip it over and line the top end of the dress right sides facing in with the strap still pinned in place. I make sure it's centered with some fabric overlapping on both sides and pin in place. Then I cut the excess fabric off along the curve on both sides. I sew the fabric piece along the edges with a straight stitch. After the piece is sewn on, I cut the excess seam allowance off along the diagonal sides at the top right above the seam and turn it right side out. I make sure to push the corners and the straps out. I sew a top stitch along the diagonal seams, then flip it over and sew another top stitch along the bottom edge with a straight stitch. Here's a close look when that's done. And I'll set that to the side for now. I grab the front of the dress to apply the buttons that the buckle hooks will snap onto. To do that, I grab both pieces for the button. Starting with the top button piece, I place it on the top left corner at the top of the dress and position it to my liking. Then I press the button onto the fabric to indicate that point. I measure the distance of that point from the side and top edge. I use those measurements to position the other button on the other side and press it down onto the fabric to indicate that point. Then I mark and cut small slits at both points. I make sure to cut through the second layer on the back as well. I take the other piece of the button with the sharp pointed end and push it through the slit from the back to the front.
Then I take the other button piece and place the hole on the other side on the top of the pointed end. At this point, I'll need to grab a hammer and hammer on the flat side on the back button piece. I make sure to hammer on a flat, stable surface to secure the button in place. I go ahead and do that off camera for both buttons. After the buttons are attached and secured, I line the front and back of the dress right sides facing in and sew down the sides with a zigzag stitch. I also sew an overlock stitch along the raw ends. When that's done, I went ahead and hemmed along the armholes and the bottom of the dress. I go ahead and turn it right side out and hook the buckles on so you can get a closer look. And now the dress is complete. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.